Now I'm equipped, so I can start. So as Sandro said, um, I will present you uh, like an idea for uh, an environment for predictive analytics of electronic health records that is based on rapid miner and uh, all, all other parts or connections to rapid miner like uh, marketplace, like our extension and everything. Um, and this, uh, this environment is developed in joint efforts of several universities for now. So it's University of Maribor, Temple University, and um, University from Geneva, and Faculty of Organizational Sciences, University of Belgrade. So this is uh, still work in progress. And here is the motivation. So PPPM is predictive, personalized, and predictive medicine as defined <clears throat> by European Association for Predictive, Personalized, and Medicine. So they have an association, so it's a really big problem. And Institute for Healthcare Improvement identified the high economic impact on global economy, everything, and they define several, several goals here. So first is to improve population health, to improve experience of care of individual patients, and per capita costs. So these are contradictory tasks, and this is really a hard problem having in mind the prices of, of medical research. So um, big data and data analytics was emphasized as one of major, major goals in <clears throat> development and medical, medical research. So the idea is to move, move patients from and to keep patients away from hospitals through uh, ultimately wellness promotions, but first to improve primary care and secondary care, and finally to improve wellness promotions. So not, the problem is not only in medical aspect, but also in healthy life and training and Everything. So, so uh, this is the current state. There is already a lot of things being being done for this patient. There are already developed softwares for virtual visits. So now, someone, uh, uh, if patient comes to the doctor with some specific case, he can. Uh, he can send, uh, send uh, a picture if it is a skin problem, he can send a picture of skin disease or whatever to specialist and get the answer pretty quickly. Uh, there is also uh, connected help. There is a lot of devices and now wearable devices that are more and more popular. Uh, everybody are wearing and we had a talk about uh, smartwatches, wristbands, and all other wearable devices, and specialized medicine devices for measuring, I don't know, blood pressure, EEG, ECG, or whatever. So, and another source of data is really social health platforms that are more and more popular, like uh, patients like me, where People are exchanging different, uh, different information, ask questions, getting answers from specialists or from other patients. And, um, uh, but also there are, there are electronic health records that are stored there and really patients like me allows, allows mm, getting that data, of course, for, for a fee that depends. So in order to be more, Interesting, Sandra mentioned some of these facts, but these are numbers, so it is anticipated that there will be a lack of uh, 90,000 doctors in US only by 2025. And this is often the reason of readmissions. Sandra told you about the problem. 
Uh, this is often the reason of readmission or late diagnosis that is really uh, expensive both in human perspective and in finance. So further Institute for Healthcare Improvement again said that from 5 million of US hospitalizations, almost 76% could be prevented. And this results in annual cost of $25 billion. Of course, this patient, after these numbers in recent years and all those motivation, this patient isn't alone anymore. Now he has a lot of big companies that are interested in him and they're interested in collecting uh, collecting the data, electronic health records, so these are Philips, Microsoft, Marant from Slovenia, Oracle, everybody has some, uh, some platform that is trying to collect and integrate data, and you see all of these signs, they have uh, different types of data, so these are data from wearable devices, electronic health records, um, uh, there are data, uh, data about so demographics of patients, insurance, paying, uh, so all, all, sorts, all sorts of data. But the problem is that this data nobody really provided, provided some tool that allows analytics, uh, I mean seamless analytics and making of accurate predictive models that could handle these problems, of course. This is not by the accident, so now we have a lot of data, I mean, in different sources, but that is, it could be integrated, but we have a lot of challenges. So first and major challenge is that healthcare and diseases are really complex problems. So this is, there are complex diseases, there are different uh, comorbidities, uh, comorbidities that could be involved, uh, multitude of, factors that could influence on development of disease, different, different contexts. So if we have like the same disease won't attack some people that are younger or older or male or women and different, different types. So the idea is to fuse the data. Of course, it would be nice if we would have a if we would have electronic health records with history of diseases of patients, but also to have the data from his wearable devices and to see, okay, now you're not active as you were before, or you are eating, uh, you're eat, not eating healthy food. There are a lot of applications about that also, so I found some application where in some student, student home, mm, there is a machine that uh, pictures that, that, that pictures the plate with the with the food and calculates all the calories and and everything that uh, that you eat after that. So that's that's pretty cool and it's pretty uh, easy to integrate something like that electronic health record. But also uh, there is a really big problem about data privacy. But many people talked about this, so I won't go deep into that, but we had some methods that address this problem. So, so um, main point here is that there is a large gap between potential of this data and, uh, and real usage. So, and problems are data privacy, also interpretability of the models, because uh, doctors and physicians, they don't want to use some models that are not interpretable, they, uh, what they cannot understand, so that is additional, additional challenge, so you have to uh, use uh, models like uh, logistic regression, linear regression, or decision trees that could be interpreted, and you know that so currently cutting-edge algorithms are SVMs or neural networks, and that's, that's additional problem, so we made um, we made a lot of methods for, and for data pre-processing. So we wanted to use standard algorithms, but to make pre-processing better. 
so this is that that gap from one side. We have a lot of lot of data sources that are generated by patients, and they are available. And now it, everything is cheap. On the other side, we have knowledge. We have experts in the field. We have even some structured structured knowledge in forms of ontologies, expert systems, or rules that could be used. And the idea is to fuse these two, these two as, um, as it was already spoken today about this, but I will show some, some examples of fusing data and knowledge and what we could get. So the idea we could use some knowledge for pre-processing data. So I don't want to get everything from the algorithms. So data scientists, they're trying to get everything from the algorithm. So I have a lot of data. I I'm, I'm know what are um, good methods in general for pre-processing, for modeling, for everything. And I want to learn everything. But then you go to a physician, and he tells you, OK, but this, this feature it's, it's not correlated with this disease. Why are you analyzing that at all? And I did a lot of effort to analyze as much data as, you ca as I can in order to find something. And somebody just can tell me, okay, this is... Okay, I don't want to say the word, but this is not beneficial. <laughs> Let's say it like, <laughs> like that, yeah. So, uh, so the idea is, let's use that knowledge and, and translate that to... Uh, and to quantify that in methods, translate that to methods that could be used for learning. And then we can make a loop and return that knowledge that is driven from data, return to knowledge, and then iterate like that. So we can improve knowledge from data sources. I mean, that's why we're all here. But also, we can really use some domain knowledge in order to improve <coughs> learning from data. And now commercials. So now the idea is to uh, wrap everything into rapid minor because of a um, lot of potential, like marketplace. So we could marketplace allows us to seamlessly share uh, share the processes or even the data, but also. RapidMiner is connected to open ML platform that is, uh, that is storing experiments uh, from different researchers. So the idea is to store the data, of course, with all privacy concerns and everything, uh, to store the data in one place and to uh, save and algorithms and processes there and ultimately that could result in an um, uh, efficient meta-learning platform really. And we already did something from that and I will talk about that on meta-learning uh, workshop on ECML PKDD in a few days. So that's, that's really good potential. Um, regarding these operators, we developed different pre-processing Parameter. I will say shortly. I will describe shortly with propositionalization, feature selection, virtual examples, and we plan to integrate our Vibo. Okay, I'm missing R here. Some of uh, some of um, operators. I mean operators. Some of these methods are developed in R, but now it is it is really nice to hear that. Its uh, uh, connection and fusion of rapid minor is R and R is much easier, and uh, we wanted to uh, extend our develop platform for white box or component based decision tree algorithms and clustering algorithms. We want to extend it to KNN and neural networks further. But if you are interested, I can tell you after after presentation, what is happening there. So some recent results. We generally used the data that are coded in ICD-9 format, but also used an ontology, ICD-9 hierarchy, to 
uh, for feature selection. So I don't want to go to details, but what we did, we tried to aggregate the data from initial here, it was 850 features. Uh, the output was readmission. So uh, from initial 850 features to reduce, to reduce feature space, but not by feature selection, but by feature compression. What does that mean? We use, we use this ontology and try to aggregate uh, these specific codes on different levels. These are uh, father-children relation or parent-child re relations. So we tried to see if lower level is beneficial for output attribute, or if it's not, I can aggregate all lower levels on one level. So instead of five features, I could have one feature that describes that, but I didn't remove them totally, but just aggregated and then preserved some information uh, from initial data set. And we got some good results. There are also several, uh, two or three papers that had a similar idea, but different strategies. So we had uh, good results here, of course. Okay, so uh, the other thing was um, addressing the problem of, um, of um, rarely observed diseases. Uh, so in this data, and generally medical data, uh, rare data is really, um, it, rare data is, happens a lot, so from different reasons, so some uh, tests could be expensive or people even with sepsis, people don't live long enough in order to collect the data or privacy concerns are the problem, so we cannot share the data between hospitals in most countries, and there are a lot of problems. So uh, we tried to, uh, I mean, we analyzed our data set, and we saw that rare diseases uh, are more often, so uh, these are disease codes, and uh, this is the distribution number of diseases, so we have just, uh, several diseases that are over, over 1,000 features. And we had uh, like 65,000 patients in this data set alone. And on the other hand, uh, okay, this, uh, those rare diseases are making a large proportion of readmissions. So up to 1,000, this is so all, uh, all diseases that are rarer than 1,000 in cumulative, they, they make 60% of all hospital readmissions for that data. But algorithms are biased to the data that they have, right? So we have rare diseases, we have frequent diseases, and we can predict pretty accurately readmission for frequent diseases, but for rare, not because we don't have the data. So we tried again to incorporate data and domain knowledge, and, uh, but now in different way we, we analyzed comorbidities. We analyzed comorbidities. Comorbidities are simultaneous appearance of two or more diseases at one patient. And we found that in different groups there are a similar distribution of diseases and we use that to generate virtual examples and to, uh, to oversample our initial data sets, and we got some good results and compared it to uh, different oversampling techniques and or ensemble techniques that are often used in these cases. This is presented a few days ago in Maribor. Uh, additionally, we uh, used the same virtual examples, but to generate uh, data, but this is different experimental set, set up with simulated situation where we cannot, we cannot share the data between hospitals. So we didn't have 65,000 of patients, but up to five, eight thousand, something like that. And we try, we uh, did some technique of randomization, but also with that domain knowledge and with different parameterization, we got virtual examples that are not real, that are um, 
there, I mean, th there was one more layer of security uh, besides uh, removing ID, hospital ID, and other things, but these diseases were randomized and added to, uh, to initial data, and we got a bit better results. Uh, another thing, this was, uh, we already developed this operator, this is propositionalization call, but uh, we use only uh, association rules to create new features. So Sandro developed uh, an implemented uh, operator that is doing that by itself. So he's applying uh, association rules, but gives you a feature set from uh, uh, from those association rules depending on, on parameters that you, that you got. So now that is available. We also got some results, but this is, uh, this is the thing that we will work on further. So again, this was feature extraction or compression. I don't know how to, how to call it, but instead of original codes, we uh, have smaller number of codes that, are, that include uh, different original codes and some relations. So, uh, this is a stacking model that was presented by Sandro a minute before. And these are our collaborators that were involved in here and that, that had some interest in future, future projects and that will probably, probably um, be our, our partners in future pro projects from Horizon. We plan to, to, to submit several Horizon projects and some other. It is interesting that um, this healthcare is really popular topic and European projects allowed to uh, collaborate between United States in, uh, and from other countries. Even NIH also allowed to, to collaborate uh, vice versa with United States and Europe, so that is, that is open now. And I hope that we'll find some new partners here, and we already found, but <laughs> after this presentation. Okay, thank you very much. If there is... <laughs>